Along the Thai-Burma border, 120,000 refugees remain in nine camps, including here at Mela, the largest settlement established 30 years ago. Most of the inhabitants are from neighboring Karin State. They have fled the fighting and human rights abuse of a conflict lasting more than six decades. For many, like 19-year-old Mo Sofa, who spent his entire life on the Thai side of the border, making ends meet by working illegally outside the camp is risky business. In the past, we had enough rice rations, but now there is a decrease in the rations. I'm afraid to get caught by police if we go to work outside the camp. They can fine us 1,000 to 2,000 baht. As Burma has opened, making it more attractive for some refugees to return, international donors have responded by reducing funding for refugee aid groups like the Border Consortium. The shortfall has led to cutbacks on basics like rice. Border Consortium Executive Director Sally Thompson says the cuts could not have come at a worse time. Whereas if we see services being reduced further, um, there is a risk that the, the structures in the camps will deteriorate and, and collapse. And really, just at the time when you need people as communities to come together to give them the space to be able to prepare for that future. Despite the hardships on the border, the long-term camp residents still maintain a sense of stability and security. And that's something that does not yet exist in their home territory where 63 years of war has left the region in shambles. If we have to go back to Burma, they should prepare the land for us and make sure that there will be no more human rights abuse. Then we can go back to Burma. In the meantime, despite Burma's political transition, the future of the country's ethnic groups remains uncertain as a new generation grows up in camps just beyond its borders. Steve Sanford reporting for VOA from Mesot, Thailand.